It's showtime. Hey, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? This is the only Survivor podcast. My name is Jake Shadell. Each week I ask my best friend, Thomas Powell, if you did indeed watch a certain reality show. Hey, Thomas, how's it going today? Any big news? Jake, uh, it's a very important day today. Uh, it is a very important anniversary. It is the 20th anniversary of the release of Nickelback, Silver Side hey. Up. Where were you? When uh, How You Remind Me uh, shook the landscape of America mm-hmm. and changed us all forever. That's incredible. I thought you were going to say that today is the uh, six-month anniversary of our new favorite holiday, 9-11 in May. Yeah. It, is, it is also the six-month anniversary of 9-11 in May, a holiday that shook the foundations <laughs> of America. I can't believe people are still talking about 9-11 in May. Like, so much time has passed. But this is 9-11 in May in September, a uh, day that will live in infamy, as FDR said. You know what else he said? What, what else did he say? He said, hey, players, welcome to Survivor. My name is Jeff Probst. Yeah, that was, uh, he's kind of running out of material for the fireside chats at a certain point. So, you know, he's just throwing stuff against, that was kind of a hallmark in the New Deal was they just threw a lot of stuff against the wall and some of it stuck and some of it didn't. So, Do you think FDR and JFP ever were alive at the same time? Jeff Probst is, I don't know Jeff Probst's middle name. <laughs> we, have, we have no way of knowing that. History doesn't even go back that far. It appears there were 16 years the world was without one FDR and Jeff Probst. From 1945 to 1961, the world was without FDR and Jeff Probst. Um, so really the worst generation reborn in, I think. Oh, did you know Jeff Probst was a frequent guest star on Mad TV? Guest starring he once... A season. He's a frequent guest star. He's a frequent guest star on Mad TV, guest starring once a season since the show's ninth season. Did they do a Survivor sketch every year? You know they did. I don't know if they did it every year, but I do remember them doing it one time at least. Um, Mad TV, great fucking shit. Is it still on? No. No. Man, that- Jake, we you, you quoted the wise words of one man uh, regarding... 9-11, and I'm going to quote uh, some other uh, wise musings on uh, the the event that, that shocked a nation. Okay. Uh, I hear people saying, we don't need this war. I say there's some things worth fighting for. What about our freedom and this piece of ground? We didn't get to keep them by backing down. They say we don't realize the mess we're getting in before you start preaching. Let me ask you this, my friend. Have you forgotten how it felt that day to see your homeland under fire and her people blown away? Have you forgotten when those towers fell? We had neighbors still inside, going through a living hell. And you say we shouldn't worry about Bin Laden. Have you forgotten? (laughs) So I was reading... (laughs) Maybe the funniest rhyme in the history of music, recorded music, is rhyming Bin Laden with forgotten. Um, what... Also, also very funny that Daryl Worley, who's a country singer, claims to have had neighbors still inside the towers. Like, no, you didn't. He may have. You don't know. You don't know what his neighbors were up to you that day. New York. Um, I was reading the uh, Mad TV cast list while you were reciting those beautiful lyrics. Uh, because I think today is the day we never forget anything of American culture. You know? Yeah, I, I think that's, yeah, this is a day to remember, all of it. One thing in particular that is very American in culture is the television program hosted by Jeff Probst, known as Survivor. Thomas, a lot of people don't know that Survivor premiered on uh, 9-11-2001. <laughs> that's why everybody's saying never forget. They never realize, never forget Survivor Never forget the where term. you were when you saw Richard Hatch and uh, Rudy for the first time. Oh, man, remember them. Rich and Rudy, right? Remember? Yeah. From Survivor Borneo. But we're not talking about Survivor Borneo. We did that several years ago. You can go back and listen to those episodes if you like. We are instead watching a new show called Survivor Gabon. (laughs) Thomas, did you watch Survivor Gabon, Earth's Last Eden, last night? Jake, I sure did. 
And I'm just now realizing that I'm saying the word last twice in that sentence. I don't like using words too much, you know? When did you last watch, for did you watch Survivor last night, Earth's Last Eden, Gabon, Survivor, Last Gabon? Mm, mm -hmm. This week's episode was called The Good Things in Life Aren't Easy. What do you think of that episode title? That's pretty good. Sorry, I was just thinking of uh, Outwit, Outplay, Outlast Eden. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) that's good. Uh, this episode first aired on December 4, 2008. Thomas, how old would you have been December 4, 2008? I would have been 17 years old, like the Winger song that we all love. And it is December now, and you were technically a child, not yet 18. So I do have to ask you, as it is December, are you still a Santa Claus guy? You you were still excited um, about Santa Claus coming down the chimney and giving you gifts and presents? Yeah. <laughs> I st- I've, I've never stopped being a Santa Claus guy. Yeah. He's a good dude. Uh, Gotta put those milk and cookies out there. Or old Saint Nick. I love that guy. And he, what a what a cool guy. He's like the I kind of guy. I, I kind of like fanboy out when Santa leaves presents for me. Yeah, uh, you could say I'm a Stan. A Santa Stan. Yeah. Uh, we stand. We stand Santa here on the. This is like the number one Santa Claus podcast. When actually. Santa is when Santa is coming down the chimney, leaving presents, he snapped. <laughs> Last week's episode received twelve point five million viewers and saw Randy get voted out. Do you think Randy's ousting increased or decreased the viewership? None of this makes any sense to me, so I'm going to say that, like, 8 million people watched it. People were devastated that Randy was <laughs> like, voted I'll never out. see Randy again. No, people actually hated Randy. Nearly a quarter million what? people hated Randy. But what about that person on Reddit? <laughs> oh, even Corinne? <laughs> uh, this week's episode received 12.73 million viewers. Pretty good numbers for so late in the season. We start off on the No Bag Tribe. Of course, as it is the only tribe that is left. Man, R.I.P. the rest of the tribes, you know? Yeah. Bob... They had to secure the no bag. Yeah. Bob is mad that they belittled Randy on his way out. I don't understand why Bob is such a big Randy guy. I don't think it's that. I think it's more that, like, he was doing it just to make a play. I don't think he was trying to humiliate Randy, and it made it look like he was. Mm. So, like, you know, I think he didn't like the amount of gloating because he was just trying to make a move. I don't know, Thomas. I feel like Bob is to Randy what you are to Santa Claus. <laughs> just loves the guy. Uh, yeah, when Randy uh, said a bunch of weird shit, he snapped. When Randy said a bunch of racist shit, I was like, that's my Santa Claus. Yeah, we stand. We stand a racist Santa. Yeah, when he uh, when he said that uh, CT, or not CT, yeah, uh, yeah, CT was, what if CT was on Survivor? Makes you think. Uh, I watch it. When uh, when uh, GC and Crystal, when he said that they were running the tribe like a gang, I felt that. <laughs> Corinne says that uh, she did not come here to make friends. And boy, howdy, is she accomplishing her goal. I just, I love that Corinne was the one to say it this season. You know? I like I liked her saying that she uh, is only nice to people that she likes. She's like, I'm really nice. It's just to people that I like. And then I'm very mean to everyone else. As it should be. You should only be nice so to nice people. Not particularly nice. <laughs> She's not nice to nice people, though. There's She's being nice, nice to people nice to, to her. I thought she said it was just people she liked. I don't know. I don't know. Um, no, I don't know. Bob and Ken go and catch fish together. This is really great. Ken is proud of himself for being a gamer in the wilderness and... The gamers have risen up. Finally. The game shall about rise again. T- about damn time. Mm-hmm. About damn time. R.I.P. Uh, Bob apparently doesn't know what's going on in the game, according to Ken. So get, Ken is going to take control of the game. Uh, do you agree with uh, with Ken that Bob Knight, the science guy, has no idea what's going on in the game? Uh, I think he has blind spots. Mm. I don't know that that's 
a totally accurate depiction of it, but it's there, there's a grain of truth there. Would you say... Randy flashes obviously is the Santa Claus of this generation, but with Bob's blind spots, yeah, he's kind of the Detective Crashmore of the, the whole thing. <laughs> Would you say that Bob Nye, the Science Guy, is the fuck? I forgot what bit we were on. Forget I said anything. Uh, th- we'll fix we'll fix that in post. Forget I said something like really funny. Yeah. Just put a laugh track in Ooh. after you fucking that up. That's a really good idea. <laughs> At the reward challenge, they run through a swamp, then collect some big spinners, and then some smaller sprockets, and then they put all the pieces in a wall, and then they spin the wall. Uh, it's good. It's good. It's good. Yep. Uh, the winners get a Samsung Instinct from Sprint with oh, videos from Oh, I love it. I love, I love the immediately dated product placement. It's so good it's whenever they good. do this. 2008. What a time to be some low-quality video. I was watching... Um, Euro trip yesterday. Uh, the phones from back then? Crazy. They don't even have Twitter on them. Yeah. Ridiculous. Okay. How, did, how did you feel about uh, the, the Matt Damon cameo in that movie? Was You, you, big, Scott, you big Scotty Doesn't Know fan? I will say, I've been singing Scotty Doesn't Know to Scotty myself doesn't for know the rest of the day. very catchy. It's a really good song. Um, was not expecting Matt Damon to pop up, so when he did, I said, is that Matt Damon? Sure is. <laughs> sure was. Um, yeah, great flick. Um Followed that up with The Scorpion King, and then another movie from the early 2000s. I'll tell you. Yeah, why are you watching the hottest movies of, like, 2002? My girlfriend and I had a sleepover. So we watched all the movies we watched from a sleepover from that era. Sorry you don't have sleepovers as an adult. Which are this is, like, what would have been it. Like, what would have been on uh, cable yeah. in the early 2000s? At, like, 1 a.m. Or 2 a.m. even, because, you know... We like to party. Even 3 a.m. possibly. Because, again, we like to party. Uh, Peggy wants Bob to have the adventure of a lifetime. Did you know, Thomas, that Peggy and Bob Nye the Science Guy matched on their little thing because they both love adventures? Uh, I didn't know that, but I'm not surprised to hear it. Well, it's true. Uh, Back in the day. Uh, Goals. They're goals. Yeah, they kind of are goals. Um, they also get pizza and beer and brownies. Corinne is not chosen to be on anybody's team. So that's really funny to me. <laughs> I think it's funny that Corinne is a salesperson, but is really mean to everybody she interacts very, with. Yeah, very mean and not really able to pitch anybody on anything. Yeah. So the team of Bob, Sugar, and Crystal wins round one. And then Bob wins round two. Very fun to see Bob succeeding. He's crushing it in these challenges. Yeah. Then he goes off on the reward. And he begins to watch his wife's video on the Samsung Instinct from Sprint. And then she says, oh, there's one more thing I have to go grab. And then in real life, she comes up from behind him and surprises her. Him. And stabs him. And then she stabbed she, him. She murdered Bob. Okay, but the world's greatest adventure. Don't you want to be stabbed by your spouse? Yeah. I'm sorry that you don't want to be stealth uh, knife. Sorry you don't love you your know. wife enough to be stabbed by her. Hitman style. The Hitman's bodyguard's wife. It turns out that it's not your wife at all. It's Agent 47. And also Jeff Probst has been Agent 47 this whole time. Fuck. All to get Bob Nye the science guy stabbed. And they got you. Uh, Bob brings Peggy back to camp. With the stab wound and all. It feels weird that he would be like, no, we're still married after this. But yeah, I guess that's I love true you. love. Yeah, this, this knife has brought us even closer together. Uh, and then he says, want to see something cool? And he whistles, and then the rest of their loved ones come in. I think, quite possibly, the best introduction of loved ones they've ever done on this show. It was great. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't Jeff being like, all right. Get ready to cry, everyone. So tell me, what's the difference between a brother and a sister? Is one of you the parents, or... How do you feel about your friend? Do you hate them? Do you... Oh, you like uh, them, okay. You... Well, this is the loved ones uh, competition, so... Do you love your friend, or do you just like them? Because it's not... 
It's not what it's about. If I killed your friend in front of you, you would be sad, right? Is that true? You have to tell I'm not, me. I'm not going to. I just want to know. I just have this knife because Peggy had the knife, okay? Can people stop asking about the knife? I just want knife? you to know that I'm not going to, but I want you to know that I could. <laughs> uh, Ken goes off to tell his sister that if he makes the final three, he will win this game. Agree or disagree? Do you think Ken has a chance to win? Yes. Sugar and her sister sprinkle their dad's ashes in their lake. Was this nice or not nice? I would say nice. Maddie proposes to his girlfriend with a necklace that he made. Was this nice or not nice? It was nice, but it went on forever. Yeah, I feel like if he really wanted to do a good proposal, he should have waited until they were back home and like been at a baseball game and been on the Jumbotron. Yeah, come on now. And he should have gotten a really big ring so everybody in the back seats can see. Yeah. And he should have been like, I will kill myself if you say no. <laughs> Jeff gave me this knife for a reason. Yeah. Um, Jeff's not going to be very happy if you say no. I'm just putting that out there right now. I thought this was a really sweet moment. Um, I, I, I liked seeing... Maddie was just so excited to see his girlfriend, you know? Yeah, it was nice. I, I do think it makes sense that... You know, being away from a significant other for an extended period of time kind of puts things in perspective. Hard growth fonder. Like, oh, I just, just really, just really miss them. You know. Yeah. Oh, I get it. I get it. Back at camp after they uh, all the loved ones leave, Bob says he wants to blindside Maddie, so he is going to make another fake idol. Bob, it's the it's the it's the Bob show. What was Bill Nye the Science Guy? It would show be incredible called? for a, a second fake idol to work. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 Bill. How many episodes do you think of? How many episodes do you think there were? Uh, fifty. No, do more. Uh, a hundred. A hundred. So that's really exciting. They have the immunity check. So there was exactly there was exactly one hundred episodes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, so they have the immunity challenge. They have to do trivia, and then there's the ball tossing. This was a cool challenge. I like this challenge a lot. Yeah, they're basically doing bocce ball. It was neat, mm-hmm. but in a big crater. Yeah, I like doing a bocce off of like a big hill, mm-hmm. off a big cliff, uh, and everybody underhanded it. Which, uh, if I had been the first person to go. I guarantee I would have tried to throw it overhand. <laughs> That's just, you know, you're not bound by uh, any, any you, have, you have no pre, like predisposition mm-hmm. to, to, to do things within normal parameters. You know, you're disrupting bocce. You're thinking outside the bun. You could say I'm thinking outside the bocce. You're living moss. <laughs> Jake, you are an example of the live moss lifestyle. Thank you. That's what I've been saying this whole time. Uh, they tried to sue me, Taco Bell. And I said, you can't sue me. And then they just stopped. I don't know. If thinking outside of the bun is a crime, lock me up. And throw away the key. Yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of thinking outside the bun. Back at the Nobag tribe, Corinne and Bob go over their story again that Marcus stole the idol that they had thrown in the ocean. So then she goes and tells Ken their fake story. Bob shows Crystal the fake idol to sway her over to their side. And then Ken comes up with a plan to get rid of the idol and Maddie at the same time. I didn't fully follow Ken's reasoning here. I think he was getting a little out over his skis on this one. I think he's his confidence has been built up because he has been playing pretty well, and he's maybe uh, overestimating his abilities. Yeah. Yeah, Ken. We'll see what happens. How far do you think Ken's going to make it? I think he is going to be the last person out before the final three. Mm. We'll see. I don't know how everybody places. I have been trying to not look it up. Uh, I will tell you that I did know Vesepia won the whole time we were watching Marquesas. I hope you're not mad that I lied to you. The whole time I was like, oh, I, I don't know. Who could it be? I, I, I knew that you knew. <laughs> it was very obvious. 
<laughs> Do I know who wins this one? I bet you don't know if I know or not. I'm going to say that you also know who wins this yeah, one. Yeah, I know who wins every single season. Give me a season. <laughs> Give me a season. I'll tell you um, who wins. Uh, season uh, 20. Sandra Diaz Twine. That was an easy one. Which one was that's that? That's villains. Oh, uh, season 21. I think that's Nicaragua. I believe his name was Fabio. Season 22. <sighs> it's Redemption Island. That's Boston Rob. Season 23. Fuck, I don't know. Well, it's okay. It's Nicaragua again. I'm going to say Judd. Judd is Fabio's real name. Nobody called him Judd. They called him Fabio. Uh, well, you said that you know who won every season, and then you said you don't know. Well, I so. thought you were going to give me the season names, not the numbers. Sounds like someone Sounds like someone can't keep their story straight. Give me... I don't know all of the season names. Are you fucking kidding me? Give, okay, give me any season names you know. Uh... <laughs> Survivor Gabon. You can't do that Earth's one. Last Eden. <laughs> you can't do that one. <laughs> uh, Survivor, Gabon, Earth's Last Eden. Susie calls people paranoid, uh, people getting paranoid, a downhill slide at Trump Council. Jeff asks a lot about paranoia as if he's somebody who's trying weed for the first time. <laughs> Maddie gets three votes. Corinne gets four votes. So Corinne is gone. Uh, see ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. The R.I.P. in peace. The shittiest Ponderosa. Uh, at the ne- never forget Corinne being eliminated from this game. <laughs> <laughs> the second episode we watched this week was called "The Good Guys Should Win in the End." Pretty good episode title, I think, and I agree. It's a quote from Sugar. Did you like this title? I did. Yeah. Sugar talking about how we were all feeling in the aftermath of 9 11. Mm, mm-hmm. And this was actually on December 11, 2008. So just about seven years ago. Uh, Day that will live in infamy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last week's episode received 12.73 million viewers. And we saw Corinne get voted out. Do you think people liked Corinne enough to stop watching? Or the opposite? In fact, I'm going to say more people watch. I'm going to say uh, 100 million people. 100 million people watched the next to last episode of Gabon Earth's Last Eden. Yeah, it was the highest rated network television uh, broadcast ever aired. Of all time, yeah. Super Bowl, excuse me, the big game doesn't even come close. Yeah. Seinfeld finale, blown out of the water. Yeah. Not this one. The penultimate episode of Survivor Gabon, Earth's Last Eden, got 100 million viewers. Got 13.05 million viewers. You really overshot it on that one, Thomas. Sorry to say. But you were right. It did uh, It did increase with Corinne getting voted out. So Maybe this is just um, a lesson. I can't believe that they got more viewers after the two uh, most unpleasant people <laughs> on the entire season got voted off. Yeah, pretty incredible. Uh, Maddie confronts Kenny about why he voted for him. Crystal says she regrets not voting for Maddie. And Kenny confronts Bob about why he lied to him about the uh, fake idol. Not fake idol. Oh, they they came up with that plan to be like, I'll give you immunity if you win. Or whatever. Who cares? We're almost done with the season. Do you even give a shit anymore? Yeah, who cares? Oh, no, this is... Bob offers his idol to Kenny if he wins immunity. That's when that, that happened. Okay. You know, just read your notes, Jake. That's all you need to do. Everything's in there. Uh, oh, Thomas. This reward challenge? Just shooting hoops. That's all it was. Just shooting hoops. We love we love shooting hoops. We love shooting hoops. Do you love shooting hoops or Santa Claus more? Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Um... And you can't be like, oh, I love shooting hoops with Santa Claus. Yeah, uh, well, okay, that's what I was going to say. Uh, But I guess, ball's life. Sorry, Santa. Yeah, ball is life. Santa Claus only comes once a year. Do you think that Santa Claus is a basketball player or a hooper? Santa Claus. Santa Claus. He's got that big belly. He's a a ho-ho hooper. He's a real hooper. He knows his one dribble pull-up. He knows his two dribble pull-up. 
these casuals out here, they think, you know, Santa Claus, not uh, a top, uh, you know, not a, not a bucket getter. Mm. People forget that Santa was a damn problem. Well, yeah, I mean, he, he was really good on defense, uh, and he's got all that girth, you know, so that's really yeah. helpful. Uh, I was told that Santa didn't have handles. <clears throat> yeah, how does he carry that big bag of presents then? Santa definitely, I think you could say Santa in his bag of presents mm-hmm. when he's out there delivering. Uh, the winner of this reward gets to go visit a gorilla sanctuary. How cool is that? Love it. How cool is that? This is maybe the greatest reward they've ever done. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bob wins again. Is there a challenge Bob doesn't win? It seems like no. Uh, after the challenge, Crystal goes to dunk the ball, but misses. I thought that was very funny. Uh, Bob shares the reward with Crystal and Kenny, and they send Susie to exile. Yeah, for being an Olympic athlete, Crystal has not displayed basically any athletic prowess this entire season. Uh, she's a runner, not a basketball player. And certainly yeah, not a hooper. They have not. They haven't had to do. Wasn't she in like the Olympic relay or something like that? Yeah. So she didn't even have to do the whole thing. She had teammates. That's our. You know. I mean. I guess if if you want to have other people run your races for you, that's that's fine. I guess I'm just built different. Yeah. Do you think a relay team would be faster running a marathon or one guy and his name is Santa Claus? Well, uh, one guy named Santa Claus, yeah, obviously. Probably. Next question. At the reward, they feast and they shower and they go to the gorilla sanctuary, and then everybody agrees to vote for Maddie. Bob says that he had a spiritual connection with the gorillas and says that they rocked his soul. Me too. I fucking love Bob Nye the Science Guy. When Bob said that, I felt that. <laughs> it's so great. Did it hurt when you the gorillas rocked your soul? <laughs> Do you hate Give me the beat boy give me the beat boys and free my soul. Did do you hate that meme, Thomas? Yes. The, did it hurt it's not fu- it's literally never been funny. Uh did it hurt when somebody else came up with a good meme format? Is that a reference to the uh, that that Rupee Carr poem that she did the reading of where she said that <laughs> she referred to someone uh pleasuring her dick. As uh, looking for honey, um, what? <laughs> Searching for honey. She reads it in like she reads it in like this really weird voice. I hate it. The did it hurt meme? I want to say that that was a reference to this poem that she did, that the reading of her doing. But maybe maybe I got that uh, conflated with uh, something. Else. I believe the meme is a reference to the tr- tried and tested pickup line. Did it hurt when you fell from heaven? I don't know that that's true. I do know that it's true. I talked to Santa about it. He came up with the whole thing. Bless you. I talked to Santa every night. <laughs> met, met Santa Claus. I'm never going to fail. <laughs> so at Exile, excuse me, at the Science Shack, Susie takes the comfort, and then she says that she's changing the name from the Sugar Shack to the Susie Shack, which I took issue with. Because we discussed last week, it's actually called the Science Shack now. It's no longer the Sugar Shack. It can be the Susie Shack now, though. I guess that makes sense. It's just, it's fucked up to me that she didn't even recognize Bob Nye, the Science Guy's tribulations, contributions to the Shack. No opinion on the Science Shack being renamed? To the Susie Shack? Yeah. What if Shaquille O'Neal was on and it was called the Shack Shack? It would be called the Shack Shack or the Radio Shack. Because he would also be selling radios. Remember when he was on that commercial? Remember? I've got me a Shack. He's as big as a whale and he's going to set sail. (laughs) Back at camp, Maddie tells Sugar to give him her idol. Kenny, Crystal, and Bob return to camp and Maddie is Maddie at them. Get it? No, please explain. Maddie is mad he at them. Oh, like he's angry. Yeah. Maddie is angry at them. No talk, me angry, you know? That's what Maddie said. Yeah, Maddie's hangry at them. 
Sugar tells Maddie that she, Bob, and Susie are targeting Crystal next. Then they have uh, an immunity challenge. They have to study a mask, go through some obstacles, and then recreate the mask all while blindfolded. Pretty good challenge. Any thoughts on this challenge? Yeah, it was neat. I liked it. Uh, Crystal goes off course at one point, which is funny, and then Bob wins his fourth challenge in a row. Pretty incredible stuff. It's Bob and I have the science guys season to lose. I he's in the drive he's in the driver's seat. Uh, he's got inertia, if you will. <laughs> Back at camp, Ken plans on getting Bob's necklace and then voting him out. Uh, <sighs> Uh, Bob is not going to give up his necklace. <laughs> no. Like, if that's your plan, you should know there's no chance. That... Yeah, you can't be playing. You cannot be, like, making decisions in your game around somebody giving you uh, the the immunity necklace that they want. It probably isn't going to happen. Yes. Would Sugar tells Bob uh, that they are planning on blindsiding him if he gives up immunity and that They should vote for Crystal. And she goes and tells Maddie to do the same. Before we talk about this tribal council, though, Thomas, we do have to talk about wildlife shots. We had gator, we had an elephant, we had bird, we had hawk, we had ox, we had millipede, we had snake, spider, monkey, and the western lowland gorilla. How many episodes of, of, of... Survivor, Gabon, Earth, Last Eden have we done and have not talked about the gorillas yet. Crazy. Damon Albarn, love him. <laughs> what is the Latin name for the Western Lowland Gorilla, Thomas? I'll give you a hint. It's uh, three words. Gorilla. That's only one word. Gorilla. Uh, it's actually Gorilla, Gorilla, Gorilla. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah. Uh, McGilla Gorilla. Mmm, that's fun. It can be found in Central Africa. They were first discovered in Gabon in whatever date Jeff said. They have jet black skin and hair. They are their sm- the smallest subspecies of gorilla at only 5 to 6 feet tall and 200 to 600 pounds. Generally calm animals until disturbed, when they will then pound their chest and loudly roar. Until they hear disturbed and then they get amped. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Um, How much do you think a baby one weighs? I'm going to say 75 pounds. Four. A baby gorilla, gorilla, gorilla wears four pounds. So that's pretty cool. Uh, These gorillas, they eat roots, they eat shoots, they eat fruit, they eat wild celery, tree bark, and pulp. You know how much of that they eat every single day? Uh, One pound. Ten babies worth. Forty pounds of food a day. Whoa. And guess what, Thomas? They are critically endangered. As, Probably because they can't find enough food. I know. As of 2018, there are approximately 300,000 remaining, and that makes up 99% of the world's gorilla population. That's a real bummer. It's a real bummer. I would like for there to be more gorillas. Please be more gorillas. They are wonderful, majestic animals. Mm-hmm. At the Tribal Council, Randy Flashes has a mohawk now. I don't know if we need to talk about it further, but it should go commented upon. Yeah, we. it's important to note it for the record. Uh, Bob recognizes that he is a threat. Maddie is happy that Bob is doing well. Uh, and Bob admits that he was willing to give up immunity if he thinks Ken is going home. So Ken plays up the potential of him going home, uh, but... Bob doesn't give him the uh, necklace because <laughs> he doesn't think he's going home. That, and rightfully yeah, so. It was great. Bob played that really well. Sugar then gives Maddie the idol. He would have gotten two votes otherwise, but it doesn't matter because Crystal got three, and that's enough. So Crystal is gone. Who do you want to win now? 
Probably sugar. Yeah, it's 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 nobody but. Sugar. I think basically, I think basically anybody, but I mean I wouldn't be mad if Maddie won, but I think he's the one I'm least invested in winning. I guess him and Susie, I'm probably like I'd be fine with either of them winning, but I'm kind of equally. The the other three are are uh, you know a cut above as far as I'm concerned. How would you want it to play out? Like what's what placement? Probably Sugar one, uh, Ken two, Bob Nye Science Guy three. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, well, who do you think will win overall? I'm gonna say Bob Nye the Science Guy. We'll find out next week when we watch the finale of Survivor Gabon Earth's Last Eden. But before that, Thomas, I do have to ask you, did you watch The Challenge, Spies, Lies, and Allies last night? Jake, I did not. Are are there any Survivor players left for them to send home? (sighs) Yes, Thomas. They did a challenge this week where they had to hop over something. Uh, Anissa dislocated her shoulder and had to leave the game. Big T. She might have to. She might have to retire. You can, like at this point, just retire, and he's so, like, we we all love it. You can still do the podcast and everything, but you don't need to keep coming on the show. Um, Big T, remember Big T? I do remember Big T. How could I forget? She fucked somebody. Ooh, who? She fucked somebody named Logan. He is from Survivor, Spain. Interesting. He is a very good looking man. Very cool, dude. Uh, Good for you, Big T. Yeah, um, that's really cool. Because Anissa was uh, eliminated outside of competition, it's a men's only elimination. And it's Gabo, who sucks, versus Logan, who is hooking up with Big T. So we like him. And he's from Survivor. So we also like him. Uh, they had to climb a rope and then solve a puzzle. And. Amanda yelled to Gabo at one point, you're from Hungary, you need to be hungry for this money. That's a really good line from Amanda. I think that's very funny. So who do you think won? Logan is from Survivor. Gabo is from Warsaw Shore, which is like Jersey Shore, but for some part of Europe. Uh, well, like Warsaw, like Pol- he's Polish? I guess. I, he's hung- hang- He's Hungarian, but I guess he's on that show too. Probably Gabo, probably won. It looked like he was going to, but it was actually Logan who won. He had something to fight for, and that's Big T. So, that's good. Gabo's gone. I've hated him since the beginning, and now he's gone. Logan is coming back to the house. Um, Pretty good stuff. Uh, So, there were um, explosions in the challenge that they did. What song, if you were music guy for MTV, what song would you play if there was an explosion. Probably Boom by P.O.D. Oh, not Tick, 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 Boom by The Hives? No. Because they did do that. <laughs> okay. They also played a song called Dance Monkey. Um, have you heard that song? Uh, I have not heard that song. Are you sure? Because I looked it up on YouTube this morning, and it has 1.6 billion plays on YouTube. <laughs> and it came out like two years ago. It was apparently a very popular song I had no idea about. Damn. <laughs> All right. So that's what's happening on Spies, Lies, and Allies. Uh, one of the best names of all time. We can all agree on that. Next week, we are watching the finale of Survivor Gabon, Earth's Last Eden. Are you excited? I am very excited. I am excited, too, because we... Can't wait. Who will win? I don't know. We will see. I do actually know, and we will see. Uh, I'm excited to see that. I'm also excited because for the first time in 15 months, we will be making live predictions going through the Survivor 41 cast and making our first predictions for the season. Um, Excuse me. So that's pretty exciting. Are you excited for this new season of Survivor? It's been a thousand years. I am very, very excited. Who? Um, Enough of this old bullshit. Let's get some new stuff in there. Let's get some let's new go. bullshit. Jeff, time for new bullshit. Um, 
Mike White apparently talked Jeff Probst out of fire tokens this season. So that's good. Mike White, great shit. Thomas, you have to say Mike White, great shit. Mike White, great Thank shit. Uh, and I, Mike White. <laughs> and I, th- I want you to think every time you have a really good shit, Mike White. Because like, he's always putting out great shit. So just think about that next time you're on the toilet. What's your Twitter if you want to tweet Mike White every time you poof? Where can people follow you yeah. for that? You can follow me. I'm always, uh, whenever I'm tweeting on the toilet, I'm always talking about Mike White. Mike White. You can follow me at Tom.Tom. Mike White. You can follow us on Twitter at D-Y-W-S-L-N. It's the name of the show. The initials of the show. You know what I mean. We're also on Instagram at The Only Survivor Podcast or on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Just Podcasts. There's various tiers for various uh, income levels. Yeah, go check it out. Just check it out. Some, well, something for everybody. Uh, right now we... Especially especially everybody that makes uh, enough money to afford uh, five-figure a month payments to us. Yeah, it would actually do a lot for our lives if you could do that. If somebody subscribed to Just Joey, only $10,000 a month, would you quit your job? I would be worried that... <laughs> <laughs> we would have to find a way to cover Joey in perpetuity, which would be hard because I believe there are only two seasons of episodes. Well, we could just rewatch it every two years or whatever. Like, what do yeah, we get from it? Yeah, this years time? down, years down the road, just like what? Is it, this is this is our hundredth uh, rewatch mm-hmm. of the Joey pilot. What do you? What are your impressions? <laughs> what What did you learn? Come back around on it. I actually love Joey again. Uh, so you can do that. Uh, it'll make us a lot of money, and we would be... Yeah, I would not quit. You. To answer your question, Jake, I would not quit my job. Okay. I, I guess I won't either then. Uh, we do want to thank the fans. Thomas, can you thank the fans? Uh, I don't know. They're kind of testing my patience by not subscribing to just Joey, but mm. I guess I will thank the fans. Thank you, fans. Thanks, fans. Uh, if you want to be a really good fan, you could go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. What is that review, boilerplate, Thomas? Five stars, unless you uh, pay for one of the tiers where you can give us a non-five-star review. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is my favorite podcast. I like it better than all of the other podcasts. I give it a big thumbs up. Yeah, and a big thumbs up is uh, indeed appropriate because this is the best show. Where else are you going to get... No, that's this isn't the best show. That's Tom Sharpley's oh, show. Fuck. we got to start all over. Well, until next time. Until we figure out... Yeah, this show's WTF, Jake. What the fuck? Okay. One of us... This is... Tom, This wait. is, uh... This, this show is called You Made It Weird with Pete Holmes. <laughs> okay, well, for another week of Pete Holmes Made It Weird, have a great summer. Deuces. I caught sight of my reflection I caught it in the window I saw the darkness in I saw the signs of my undoing They had been there from the start And the darkness still has work to do The knotted cords untying The heated and the holy Oh, they're sitting there on high so secure with everything they're buying in the blood of Is that a dagger or a crucifix?
Fred, let's go. Fred Claus? That's me. Santa's brother. Oh, I thought it was Santa's son. Um, what's Santa Claus's son's name? Santa Claus, excuse me, of course. Okay. Smarten up, probes. <laughs>